Hey folks, I'm totally not named Dan, though you can call me that if you want. And in the last video, I tried to cover the secret lairs for Street Fighter and Neon Dynasty in Magic the Gathering, but instead ended up spending most of my time talking about the Set 3 DLC for My Hero Academia. Well, Set 4 version is releasing on the 7th of April, and I happen to have a box a little early. I can't tell you how I've got it to protect my sources, but the official reveals are starting now, so I figured let's do a nice quick video on it, try and get it out while it's still hot, shall we? So this one specifically is the chibi one, and you heard me talk last time about how crazy some of the cards were. These get even wilder. So first up, you can really see the foil this time. Don't know why it's so much more prominent than it was before, but it's definitely there. And we start off with a Razorhead 3, who is, as you can hopefully see, though the foil's making things real tough, a 5-6. Now, 5 difficulty for a character is already interesting. He is a 5 hand size with 29 health, which is not a lot for that. But your Razorhead cards get minus 3 difficulty, so anytime you're playing them rather than blocking with them, because... Blocking doesn't look at the card difficulty, it looks at a difficulty made from the block modifier and a bunch of other things. Anytime you're actually playing him as a form, he's a Tug diff, which is real easy. And then Enhance, your attack gets plus one speed and plus one damage for each non-attack card in your card pool. If this is the second time you've played this ability this turn, your next attack ignores progressive difficulty. So your third attack of the turn just ignores progressive. That's pretty darn sweet. And then response after you play a character card, draw two cards and seal one rival foundation. So similar to how he can draw two cards after he plays an action in his first version. So yeah, some character stacking going on there. And then we've got Izuku Midoriya, a 3-6, so even cheaper to play, but maybe not in a razor head. Um, yeah, nothing lowering his character difficulty here. It's a 6-28, so slightly less health, but a good deal more hand size. Enhance this kick or punch attack gets plus one damage for each character card in your stage, so... Just plus one to all his kicks or punches unless he decides to stack himself, and even plus one to everything is quite nice. Response once per turn after you play a kick or punch card. Note card, not attack, so if you ever manage to get hold of a kick or punch, none attack. That makes this way more interesting. That card gets breaker two or stun two if it does not have that keyword already. So, you know how I love those breaker two cards? Ice Storm and Naval Laser Beam? Well... This makes all your punches and kicks into them once per turn. Still probably worth running one of the others alongside, just so that you can have Breaker 2 a second time in the turn. But you don't really need it. Just the fact that you can do it once on any punch or kick is crazy. And he gets stunned on his own turn as well to lock the opponent down even more. Finally, enhance once per game, draw one card for each character card in your stage. Not the biggest thing, but at some point that's going to be crazy, especially if you've got four of them in there and he suddenly becomes basically a ten-hander for the turn. Then we have Katsuki Bakugo, who is a 6-6. Six, six. So he's probably not based around stacking characters. He's a 7-19 in terms of hand size and health. Enhance, discard one Katsuki Bakugo card from your hand. Your attack gets plus two damage. You may remove one fury attack from your card pool. So rather than blowing up foundations now, he just discards extra copies of Katsuki Bakugo to his thing. And the best part of that is it's not specifically this Katsuki Bakugo. Unlike with stacking, you can use other copies very much the same way you do in True Form All Might. True Form All Might was insane. I will link you to my deck of that down below. But also, the fact that he removes cards from his card pool means he ignores progressive, means he kind of does what True Form does in that regard as well. The only problem is he doesn't have the card draw on face. Hopefully there's some good card draw on one of his symbols. I'm not sure there is currently. But if you can make him draw more cards, he's going to be crazy. Then he has Enhanced Flip 3 Foundations, which in a character-based deck is going to be a difficult ask. Once per turn, draw two cards, only playable if you have less cards in your hand than your rival. Okay, so if you've spent your entire hand and your rival still has a block left, you just pick up two cards by flipping your foundations. Not going to happen all the time, because getting free foundations is going to be difficult in a character who cares about having lots of characters in the deck, but even so... That's going to be good. That's going to make up for his drawback of spending two cards per attack, basically. He's crazy. I'm really looking forward to playing him. Then we have a 3-6 Shoto Todoroki, who's a 720 character in terms of health and hand size. Um, hand size and health, even. Enhanced discard one character card from your stage. 
So one that you've actually built. Another copy of him, basically. Mid and freeze one rival foundation. So you just shut down one of your opponent's cards for two turn cycles, basically, if you do it on their turn. That's already wild. And then we have enhance once per turn. This attack gets plus X or minus X damage. X equals the number of your rival's committed foundations to a maximum of five. Okay, that's all right. But once per turn, plus five damage is... No, actually, that's still pretty good. I don't like the fact that it's tapped, but it's still pretty good. And then you'll notice we haven't had support in between the characters like last time, because we don't have support specifically for these characters anymore. Next, we have a bunch of attacks that don't go with them. We have Get Loud, the Present Mike, or Presidential Michael, as I like to call him. It's a 5-3 ranged combo on a mid block. It's a 2 high for 6 damage with a plus 2 high block itself. But if it combos on a mid block, you can enhance it to have your rival discard the top X cards of their deck and give your attack plus X speed, where X is the highest printed difficulty of a non-attack card in your card pool. Interesting that it specifies non-attack card. I'm guessing the best way to deal with that is characters, because most characters are 6 difficulty. So if you happen to play a 6 difficulty character and then this, and note all characters are mid-blocks, so that will trigger the combo, then that gives just straight up plus 6 speed to this, makes it an 8 speed attack. Yeah, it also makes it a 6 diff, and you have to play a 6 diff before it, so it's kind of eh. But it does a lot still. Then enhance, add one card from your stage to your card pool, draw one card. Okay, so that puts the character in there if you need it to, and it draws you an extra card, which is always nice. What this doesn't do is put the mid-block before, but if you have a mid-block before this already, then you can pick up that character card from your stage, so you don't have to play the six difficulty character before you play this. And then when you're done with this, you play Measured Violence just to build that character straight back down. Then my personal favorite, Quick Thinking, from Momo. This is a 4-2, so it's a bad check, but it's a 3-high for 4. It's a plus 2 low block, ally ranged weapon, and it has enhance, remove one ready foundation, build one non-unique card with a check value of 5 or 6 from your discard pile. That's most foundations and all characters you can build. Now obviously there's no point in building a character that isn't your character, because that will cause it to just be discarded again immediately. But if you're playing a character who cares about stacking, then this will build an extra copy of your character. It'll really turn on the abilities. It's great in the right deck. Rushing in for Ida, then, is a 5-3. It's a plus one high block, so a nicer block than any of the others. It's a four mid for five. It's an EX2 kick. Enhance, choose one card in your stage. This attack gets plus one speed for each copy of that card in your stage. So if you've stacked a lot of characters, that'll do that. If you've got a lot of duplicate foundations, it'll do that. It works really well with a deck who, who wants to make duplicate foundations. And just, it's an all-round pretty nice card. Especially as, as it starts at a 4 speed, even plus 1 is enough to push it to your opponent will have to commit to block this. In any deck but a character stacker, because, you know, if you're blocking with a plus 0 mid-block and you have a lot of 6s in your deck, you're liable to pass that check in a way that most decks otherwise wouldn't. Then Shocking Entrance, a 4-3 with a plus 2 low block. It's a 2 low for 5, Charge Fury ranged. Enhance, this attack gets plus 2 speed, only playable if this is the only card in your card pool. So you just play this first, or you discard the other things from your card pool. As a Fury and a Fire, this actually works quite well with a new Bakugo, because he just discards all his previous attacks anyway. And then Enhance, discard one card, add one character or asset card from your discard pile to your hand. So this just lets Bakugo fish for his additional character, so he can discard them again to get rid of that previous thing to give that plus 2 speed. Seems real nice for him. And that's all the attacks, so moving on, we finally have four foundations. And I don't think we're going to start with the All Might one, because that's probably the craziest here. We'll start with Kirishima's Assistance. It's a 1-5, plus 3 low block, fairly standard stats. Ally with Response Flip, after your rival partially blocks your attack, seal their block. So unless your opponent completely blocks, you turn off their breaker. And you can do that to all sorts of other on-block abilities, which we've been seeing more and more of lately. It's alright, but it feels kind of niche. Then we've got Asui's Friendship, a 2-5 with a plus 4 high, so you're not going to be blocking with that realistically. Still an ally, though. And Response Commit, after your range attack deals damage, your rival commits two foundations. So, feels like a big cost being commit a 2, and actually dealing damage with a range attack. But... If you successfully do that, you do make it a lot harder for your opponent to block. 
Then there's Uraraka's Encouragement, which is a 3 4 plus 2 low block. Ally again. I think all of these are allies, actually. Yeah, they are. First form, remove. Search your deck for one character and add it to your hand. Big cost, but it finds you your character. It's real neat in that. Or first form remove, add one non-unique foundation from your discard pile to your hand. So it fishes up anything you need, and neatly it also shares symbols with the next card. Or at least shares the life symbol. All Might's Mentorship, another 3-4. And this is a plus 2 mid block, and it's also an ally. Doesn't count towards progressive difficulty to play attacks, so this wants to be in your card pool on your attack turn, like most foundations don't. And it has response card pool, after an attack deals damage, draw one card and discard one card. So if any of you know about the Gamer Toga build, where she just fishes through her deck to find as many copies as possible of Alleyway Ambush, this is extra support for that, because it fills the card pool without counting to progressive, and it lets her keep doing that draw and discard even after her characters run out of it. So I reckon she's going to be the deck to beat in the coming months. These won't be officially tournament legal until two weeks after their release, so on the 21st of April. But they will be playable at locals from the moment they officially come out, which is the 7th of April. And, well, I've got them now, so I gotta do some fun testing. It's gonna be a good time. See you, everyone. Hope you enjoy them as much as I do.